Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Fresh and Slauson here, and welcome to the YouTube version of Renegade Radio. This is the extended version that you don't get when you see the live version, because the live version gets recorded a little bit, uh, a few minutes later, once we get more people in here, or once my crew starts. I'm your host with the most, Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of Renegade Radio. It's episode number seven of season two. Technically, if you want to add up all the episodes that we've done total, uh, since we decided to do a, a split season, uh, our two season split, I should say. Yeah, I was going to do one season uh, completely, but I figure, uh, let's just do kind of like what most people do. They shorten things up to make it more interesting. Even though we haven't done a full year yet, but we this we're on season two now. Uh, we have been for the last you know six other episodes that we've done, but this is the seventh episode of of season two, and uh, we're at technically the twenty third episode of the show, uh, completely anyway of the episodes, not including the special stuff that we've done or the other other interviews or anything that's uh, extra. Twenty three episodes officially as of today. As of Monday, March or Monday, February nineteenth, twenty twenty four. Well, tonight we have a very, very special guest. Our original guest, Vinnie Berry, uh, was supposed to be on for a second time, and we were going to do a discussion with uh, on his book about Black Bart, but we're going to do we're going to decide decide to do that another time, uh, later in the future possibly. Uh, tonight we got a replacement guest. And this guest is huge. I mean, huge. If this video doesn't do, you know, at least 500 views, you know, by the end of the week, I'd be surprised. You know, that's minimum compared to what I really would like it to do. But we are getting a legend in the pro wrestling business. And this guy is not even a pro wrestler. This guy is an illustrator, a guy who is a writer, wrote many, many books on wrestlers, uh, current uh, pop culture events, and uh, currently does stuff for uh, Inside the Ropes magazine, which I do subscribe to, and also does stuff for, uh, or did stuff for the WWF magazine, and WWE magazine, pretty much the same thing as WWF, WWE. His name is Keith Elliott Greenberg, and uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to have him on tonight. Next week, we're going to have Travis Orndorff on, and he's the uh, son of the late great Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And then, you know, in another couple of weeks here, or, or we're going to be starting, or actually as of next week, uh, after our last episode of February, we're going to be starting March Madness Month. And honestly, I'm not really too sure if we're going to really do a whole lot. I'm going to try to, to book some, some people, or we're going to try to do what we can to book some people for March. And depending on how the booking goes for the month, we may, we may end up taking a, a week or two off of the show because I'm really happy with the way things have been over the last few episodes and everything. Uh, since the start of season two, especially we've had guests on more than one guest on most episodes. Uh, most episodes we've had two or maybe even three on. And if I calculate everything, we've had at least, well, close to 20 guests already in the, <laughs> by the end of the month or when this month is over. We'll have a total of twenty about twenty guests that we've had on since the start of season two, so if that doesn't deserve a little bit of a break, a little bit of a spring break, if you will, uh, then I don't know what what does because what I what I may just do is we may just take a, a couple weeks off of doing the show, and I may just find some other people in the interview that has nothing to do with the show itself, just separate, like I did last week with the Troy Evans interview and stuff. And uh, yeah, so anyway, so now we're getting some people coming in now. Let's see if Sam's coming in here. Do, 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 Hello, hello. 
Yeah, I don't I don't hear it yet. Obviously it's still still early, but we got about ten minutes before showtime. I just figure I'd get things started here. Oh, there we go. How's it going, man? Yeah, uh, busy day. I was on the road all day. Oh. Well you do doing? I took Jace back to Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Uh, and just about a half hour ago, I had a meeting with our cook up the bar and the manager. And oh, I didn't, cut off, I didn't think I was going to make it tonight. Oh, kind of oh, crazy. You sure, you sure let me know then. Then uh, you know, if you need more time, it would have been, would have been all right. You know, yeah, but I did everything in time. Okay. Speaking of yeah. time, look who's back? <laughs> or if you can yeah. see her, but no, she can't. She has to turn back her audio on her. Mama okay. Keith. I think hey. I figured it out. Oh, yeah. Cool How's that. everybody doing? Hey, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, How you been? You, I thought you died. Jeez. <laughs> no, I'm just well, kidding. No, that, it wasn't me. I didn't. I wasn't the stabby or the stabber. So. Oh, all, okay. All You're just seeing yeah. the, the surprise. You're like, oh, my God, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> so didn't, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I swear. Of course, you know we should really joke around about that, but you know it, it is yeah. what it is. It was a serious. Well, I know, hey, I know what yeah, happens when that shit happens. I mean, I've yeah. been through it all. It, it it takes everything. I mean, they don't they don't even understand what they did. Like they have no clue. Just, yeah, I mean, that, but the money it's involved and the uh, the the. the the pain it puts against the bar. I mean, I've been through it. People shooting and, you know, outside the bar, inside the bar, and just, I know it's, I know that's why I felt for you, man. No, well, we, were, we were never thought it would have happened here in a, you know, a small town, especially like Macintosh. You know, that, that's, right. that's a surprise for me because I, I didn't think that ever happened at, at such a Bob's bar. So a peaceful town. Right. And then, There's... It could happen anywhere. Totally. Hmm? One asshole. There's yeah, crazy people here. One that's asshole. All it takes. That's all it takes. One asshole. Yep. I'm looking yep. for a picture here. I'm actually trying to see if I can I think I can set up my background on this one too. So. Yeah, I, your your audio is kind of still a little scratchy though, or or it might just be laggy because of the internet maybe. So try to try to work on that if you can. Yeah. Because yeah. it's. Well, still, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not really talking much, so. Am I? It's lagging, you said. Well, it just kind of like it. It makes a little crunchy sound, like an audio crunch. Yeah. It. Yeah. This um, computer it's actually crunch. has a shitty <laughs> mic. It's got a shitty mic. See, so it sounds right to me. Well, it depends on it depends on what she's doing. Well, <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, I get to use this next week. Can you see that? Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. I think I've seen. This temporary. Okay. Yeah, um, he decided to change the vocal booth into an actual booth for the radio show and for, um, like, his his radio show and for the podcast. So. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. I'll get the live here set up here. Well, hopefully you're able to look up some information on, on Keith. I mean, he's a well-known oh, guy in pro wrestling and well known wrestling guy. Well, I mean, for for not being a wrestler, he, he's definitely well known. He's up there with guys like Billy Apter and Eric Bischoff and freaking Dave Hebner, Earl Hebner. For the people that you know don't get enough credit for the things that they do in the industry, he's like the modern day uh, Dave Meltzer. You know, and if you know who that is, you probably don't know. I don't. Anyway. I'm not into that stuff. My brother. Well, is no, and... but you know, it's crazy. This guy. It's it, it's not just wrestling. This guy, I mean, he's he had, he dry, writes murder mysteries too, like true murder, like not yeah. murder mysteries. Sorry, murder fiction. Yep, yep, yep. He, oh, where did it? I think I got it. Uh, and that surprised did me it? because I didn't know that he did more than just that. I thought he was just wrestling related. He also works for CNN, but he doesn't want want us to talk about that that part because that's all kind of that's his private deal. He does something for CNN once in a while. Like That's like, good though. Uh, but we want to talk more about wrestling. We want to talk about his books. You know, talk about whatever, whatever you want to talk about as far as the stuff that he's done. But you know, because we're on the road to WrestleMania, and I don't know is, is uh, I, I, I suppose you probably would be going, Sam. But I'm sure Mad Dog would probably try to get a ticket to go to uh, Philadelphia for WrestleMania. It's right in your backyard, for crying out loud. Well, I don't I don't think know. You know. 
how far Philly is from Pittsburgh. I don't I don't know the distance over there. Really. Yeah, Philly's a good bit away, six hours or something. Oh, really? So okay, see, I I, I didn't know that. I, I I assumed it was like next door or whatever. Philly's on the other side of uh, Pennsylvania. Like we're on we're on the east coast or on the west coast of Pennsylvania, and Philly's on the west coast. So that's more close to like New Jersey and and uh, and New York and everything. I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I had no clue. I, I've never been there before, so I don't know. I know the West Coast and stuff, and I've been there and whatever. But let's see. This Mad Dog on his way in. You don't know. He should He's be. He, he said he's going to come in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He he'll be he he called me on the phone about an hour ago. Surprisingly. He what? He called me on the phone. I gave well, I gave my number last week. And he he gave me a phone oh, call. He did call you on the phone. Yeah. What did he people have to still say? do that. <laughs> yes, people still do that. <laughs> what did he have to say? Well, he, 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 he was just you know he was letting me know his weekend that he went to the uh, the uh, he midget had a, wrestling midget wrestling and then he had uh, the comic stuff going on. He had, he had a lot of fun last night, so he didn't yes, get he before, he wasn't when he was heavy. He wasn't doing anything. Now he's starting to get out. He's starting to do shit and. Yeah, well, that's good though. That's that's really good. He said he had a chase, or he, he was either chased by a midget or he had to chase a midget. One of the two. <laughs> As they took his hat or something. <laughs> I'd like to see a video on that. <laughs> I think I think Tony's really excellent on that on these wrestlers, man. He he knows they seem to like him on that shit. He answers he asks the right questions. Yeah, you know. Well, I can you know. Well, I won't say anything on camera here because I hit the record button, but. Maybe off camera, or maybe I'll call you after the shows that are over and talk to you about why why our, our the person that we were going to have on originally, well, I'll tell you why it's not happening. Because we've got a private I, chat. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know, but I just I probably said too much already since I hit the record button. Oh, it's about one of us, right? <laughs> well, 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 yeah, but but it's not you. It just. It's just the uh, sound interest, I guess. You know, people love to. It's about the over speaking and not get you know, not getting enough time. And I said, well, I was, that's why I was going to let you come back and give you an hour and everything. And and I'm sorry, my crew is the way they are, but it's just it's a round table. And what do you expect? We're not all yeah, we did, not all we did together. That on my show we, before, huh? We did that on my show before. You can watch that Paulie Shore thing I did. What you know, mainly put on yeah. the internet. Same thing that's because totally, you just can't. You don't know who's going to speak. Yeah, that's all. That's all. But but see, the, the thing about that, I'm sure you know everybody. At least from what I saw, anyway, because it was, I always saw like a two minute video of that. Everybody kind of waited till they turned to speak. Like Polly, like introduced everybody. Right, that's the way we should do it. I mean, I told you that from the beginning. Yeah, I like know, that, but like I, 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 I just don't. I just well, the don't believe it's going to The one show you did with what's his name is you and um John. Yeah, you guys made a mistake by talking about Tony in the beginning. Yeah, how he steps on people and say you shouldn't do that because, you know, what I'm saying he might get yeah. pissed off. I mean, I don't care if he, I don't know if you care if he quits or not, but you know, well, I, I, yeah, I, I, and that's why I try not to be, you know, I, I try not to be careful with what I say a little bit now because I just like. In fact, I told Tony he said some things. I'm like, dude, don't say nothing on the internet <laughs> yeah. unless you're gonna, you know, what I mean, Speaking well. Of which. Sometimes you know I'll I'll say things or whatever and I don't re even realize that I'm saying it until I look back on it and it's like oh okay well, oh, that's what was said because it's like you're in that moment sometimes ever been in a moment sure you have <laughs> yeah you, you know it's like sometimes it's just you just say things you know just to say things it's not because right. you're trying to well get anybody like mad or whatever because Mad Dog knows he talks yeah. he over speaks a lot. We don't well, have to he, that. First of all, he's not professional in this shit at all. You know, what I mean, he's never <laughs> done this before. No, just like, just like when he <laughs> did either. his karma, huh? Like well, when he did, his... yeah. Because what I believe, what I believe is that even if we were in together in a, in a room or whatever, I would believe that uh, he would still do that. I think we all, you know, like even if we told him, you know, not to do that, I think he would still probably do that. I don't think it would make a make a difference. <laughs> See, he's a lot like me too. He forgets everything he's going to say, so he has to say it or he loses it. I do but that. He does all research. Night. I do that all night. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what I want to say, and then 
I try to get a word and nobody lets me get a word in. So <laughs> that's like right now, I'm just talking over you. <laughs> well, it happens to me all the time. I mean, I guess I'm the low yeah. man on the pole. I'm the low no. man on the totem pole. No, no, you're up there. You're you're up, you're you're one of the higher ones. You're you're next to me on the pole on the pole. <laughs> Which uh, sounds kind of you I know. bet you I'm higher. Well, power oh, wait, we're attacking higher. the totem pole. Never mind. What, what did you just smoke? <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right, all right, kids. Calm down now. Okay, I think we're. I'm excited. We're I'm back at school. Let me uh, send you guys the link real quick, and then, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I missed my Monday nights. I, yeah, well, we miss having you on there. too. That's why we're doing a nice. I'm gonna do a nice little introduction for you and introduce Aww. you. And it'll be yeah. This is this is nice. I mean, John Roberts won't be on obviously because of the funeral that he had to go through today. So, so I missed something. He, he, yeah, he well he had he, he's been losing a lot of friends, kind of like how Sam has lost some friends and all that, and it seems like Anthony has lost a few too. Uh, one of his buddies, uh, father passed away from I'm actually from Brooks here or whatever. So oh. he was a defibrillator, and I think he was in Brooks. He said he let me know if he'd stop by, but I don't think he's gonna stop by. I haven't got no calls or nothing, so but it's not a big deal. Doors are locked if he does or whatever. Or maybe it's still locked. I don't know. I don't remember if I locked it or not. But anyway, so we're gonna start the show and uh with who we have right now, whatever bad dog gets here, he'll he'll get here. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another great edition of Renegade Radio right here on Facebook here with uh, the crew that never stops crewing, you know, where we're just keeping on cruising along week by week by week, uh, doing one great show after another. It's almost like now, how can we top the, the previous week, it seems like. Not that we're trying to or anything, but hey, any any improvements that we can make uh, for ourselves or for the show itself is is, uh, is a good time. Well, I'm your host with the most, Frankie Slauson. We're on season two, episode number seven, and I'm with Screaming Sam and Mama T, and uh, eventually we'll get uh, Mad Dog in here as well, and Antique Man, where where whenever he gets in here. But tonight he's on his way. He's on his way. Tonight we got. Yeah, he's on his way. Okay, tonight we have a big, big guest. I mean, this is a when you, when you talk about the totem pole, as Sam was talking about earlier on. This guy definitely is on the totem pole when it comes to knowing how to write good stories, uh, knowing how to tell a good story, uh, knowing how to talk about the things that people care about when it comes to pop culture events or most of us that love pro wrestling. He's one of those guys that will talk pro wrestling, whatever is going on in current events. I don't even know what we're going to even bring up. You know, there's so much stuff we could talk about when it comes to to wrestling currently right now. And it's not just WWE related stuff. It's everything. It's AEW. It's Ring of Honor. It's all the stuff that's out there. You don't just follow just one thing anymore. I mean, maybe back in the day when he worked for WWE, he was kind of forced to just uh, focus on just that level of uh, of wrestling. But you know, now that he doesn't anymore, he can kind of branch out, and I'm sure he does. Anyway, his name is Keith Elliott Greenberg, and uh, as far as I know currently, uh, the magazine that he does uh, work on is uh, the uh, UK magazine that's uh, only available in the UK, but they, they did make it available in the States, but it's only online only, as far as I know. Uh, you can't really get it in stores unless it's in Chicago for at the Pro Wrestling uh, Search Store in Chicago. Uh, Inside the Ropes. It's a monster magazine. It almost reminds me of the old, the way the WWF magazine used to be, where it's just cool uh, articles about what's going on in wrestling, pay per view results. So, who, who, what's the main stories? What are some of the old stories? These guys go. It's a whole big crew that they have overseas that go through the archives of wrestling. They'll even go through stuff like that that's in the past, like you know, thirty years ago. What year was it? It was nineteen ninety four. A lot of things happened in 1994 in the world of wrestling. So that, that's kind of the focus oh. on the attention right now. So anyway, it's pretty exciting to to be able to to, to have him on tonight about 6.30 here, uh, Keith Elliott Greenberg. But uh, speaking of, of uh, somebody big on the tone pole that uh, making their and making their long-awaited return almost 
almost uh, what a month and a half later. The last time she was on was uh, the season two premiere and hasn't been on since because we thought she died, you know, but well, she didn't yeah. die. She's still around. The rumors, of my death, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> That's by our good friend, Neil Carlson, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to yeah. that. Yeah. We'll yeah, let's that. not get into anyway. that. Yeah. But anyway, welcome back, Mama T. You're you've missed so much. It's, it feels like we haven't seen you in like a hundred years here. What's going on? Yes, on I'm feeling a little ancient. No, um <laughs> No, I've had hard, hardware problems, software problems. We've been having trouble, as you know, with the being open certain hours because of certain things that happened here in town. I won't go into detail right now because that's a long story. But uh, no, I'm I'm back now. I I lost my phone. It was one of the major deals, and I don't have Wi. I didn't have Wi Fi here either, so that was one of the major things. But now we got a Wi Fi back, and I've got my laptop. And Bobby's setting up the studio here. He's gonna have a booth just for podcasts and radio shows so oh cool the process of that and waiting for my car to get out of the shop so yeah i've really missed you guys <laughs> so did you I've watch missed like, everyone so missed so you okay too. You too. oh yeah oh yeah we, we we've definitely missed you i mean it's it's definitely been a, a missing link you know feel because you missed out on a lot of yeah, stuff that's me and, the missing link <laughs> but but you you missed out on a lot of things but i know you said you kind of watched a little bit of a marathon uh what do you think of some of the stuff that we were able to achieve in the oh, short time that you were going feels uh, like there, there, there's I, I i felt like while i was watching i was like man i'd be like you guys did good you guys you guys did i was good. Gonna, oh, i was I was going to say that I was going to, you know, originally have you be the the, the co-host for the Dick Warlock interview if I knew yes. that you were able to. But, you know, you weren't able to at the time or you had no connection. Yeah. I know yeah, that, that Bob wanted me to come pick you up all the time, but it's like if you had no money. Well, I... just for one. Oh, well, yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Well, we, we didn't need for every. every... Yeah. Well, because I had you hadn't the week before, so. I had, I had he was had trying to get all. me out of the house. I think it was. I think he was just trying to get me out. Of, I think he was sick of me. Oh geez, wow! Well, no car, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I drove by earlier, earlier today, when I you know went shopping over in the Foss, and you know you, I stopped by your place, and nobody was there. It was all blocked, and then you oh, get we were upstairs. Room. Yeah, well, I, I don't... we were upstairs. We were only open for lunch today. We we oh, gotta wait well, until we have come up our there and just like say, hey, I'm here. Well, no. and, you know. <laughs> and my well, laptop anyway. wasn't open. So. Oh yeah. Well, it, does, it doesn't matter. It's just good to see you out here. And also, we got Antique Man and Mad Dog here. So, uh, you know, most of the crew is here. Missing one, John Roberts, but he'll be back next week when we have uh, uh, Travis Orndorff on. And who's Travis <laughs> Orndorff? Well, he's the guy who's the son of the legendary Mister Wonderful Paul Orndorff. So we're kind of doing like a salute to the road to WrestleMania. Wasn't really planned that way. It just kind of like, hey, you know. Let's get some wrestling people on. So that's what we did last hey, week. Last week we had Bill Sullivan on. <laughs> I had no arguments there. Yeah, it was good. The interview was good. The rest of the crew, but <laughs> hey, well, you, you egg some lumps, buddies. Well, here, here's the thing about here's the thing about that interview that I wish it would have been a little bit more, a little bit more improved on, uh, not on our part because we did, we did what we were supposed to do. We asked questions and stuff. He was kind of a short answered person, like a short answer guy. I've had many interviews in the past where sometimes you know you'll you'll get some really good questions. Even when I used to write down questions and stuff back in the day, and and you and and you only have so many questions that you want to ask, and the rest is just more like whatever comes up or whatever. Uh, <laughs> when when you get somebody that's a short answer question person, you know when they just like only give a little bit of a response per per statement, it makes the interview like i don't know it puts a little funk on things because it's like you're hoping that the person was going to tell some story or whatever and and they they tell you like a little brief you know I, oh I'm yeah not... that was fun that was a good night 
Yeah, and I mean, I I think maybe it'd be different if we were like in person and all that stuff. But I've seen other interviews where he's he's been on shows for like two hours just talking and stuff. So maybe it's just maybe he's just sick and tired of talking about it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you never know, never know. So I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get mad at him for that. It's just that some people just are do that, and you know you never know who you know. So when I interview. Wow. When I interviewed Jason Reitman, the guy who uh, is now known for directing the Ghostbusters films that we know of now, uh, back in the day, he was doing a movie called Thank You for Smoking uh, back in like 2007. And that interview was like a three minute interview. I had like lots of questions ready to go. And he just gave short answers every time. Now I see interviews <laughs> where, he's done, where he's done better interviews. So go ahead. Don't hear me? Oh, we hear you. We hear you. I just interrupted you. Yeah. My answer. My <laughs> phone. Oh. Hey, my dog. I said hi to Mama T. Not, and I said, "Why is my brother's Facebook frozen?" Not, and you're rambling on, and I can't get in. <laughs> and then I want to say hi, Eric. And then uh, hi, Eric. Go to my full food. Yeah. <laughs> it's six o'clock. Hey, I. Uh, <laughs> that's what I do. I, you know, the midgets of wrestling all stars. You got to throw somebody? Can anybody yeah. hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Are you saying you well you told me you went to the busy wrestler and now no, I was uh, uh, security and yeah that's kind of, that was filmed in Pittsburgh yesterday. It took us seven hours to do the whole thing. I got paid for it and then uh because I went back into my security job. Sure. And, uh, and it's gonna be on next year. It's the micro all stars of wrestling. Sure, I've I've heard that promotion. Of that I think they might be doing something in my area here too, pretty soon. I believe, or, or the Chicago area anyway. But uh, I now you you were saying something that you tell me that you were you getting chased by a midget or did you have to chase a midget? <laughs> no, he jumped on me, slapped me in the face, and took my hat and started running around the ring. So I had to go chase him. <laughs> I got him the of his pants and threw him to the second rope, and the guy pinned him, and he come out was kicking me on the way out. It was. <laughs> I was holding him by his head for like five minutes. He hit and kicked me. He's going. <laughs> oh, grabbed him by his pants and rolled him into the ring, and he got pinned up. Oh, that's 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 a uh, amazing. Oh, that well, was... was the first time I ever had in my life. Well, that's good. That's good. I can't wait to see the video of that because you know, I, I tell you what, you know, seeing see the you you interact with a midget, you know, that'd be kind of that'd be just that'd make my day. Just like you know, to see the. Yeah, Fucker ran faster than me. <laughs> well, of course he's well, he's small. You know, he's like the. I, I suppose you think of him. You think of like Roadrunner or whatever. Or you think of like they'll make a little dee -dee -dee sound like they do on Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> Mama T, where have you been, honey? I've been around. I've been stuck in my house with no Wi-Fi and no phone and um, no car. And wow, that's miserable. And the bar was shut down. Pretty much uh, all we've been doing is lunches during the week for three hours a day. So, yeah. Jeez, that's I've, 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 been, I've been upstairs watching a lot of TV, having a lot of snacks. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Getting fat and sassy. Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch, <laughs> watching movies. I'm, uh, I'm looking at you. I, I, every once in a while, I borrow somebody's hotspot with my laptop, and I'd scroll through Facebook a little bit and see how much weight you guys are are losing and i'm just like i mean good for you guys but fuck you good job you guys are doing a good job people are saying welcome back mama t um gregory david olson yeah, yeah, yeah he's, gonna, he's gonna leg drop you sean <laughs> After he's, been, um, after he's been directing now already, it was already starting. He's ready. He can't wait to see the to hear the new to, to have a meeting. Well, he has a meeting soon, but let's see here. I can't read. I'm excited to see the new guest. I'll pick his brain. <coughs> yeah, uh, Keith Elliott Greenberg is who we're having on tonight, and uh, uh, that should be a lot of fun. I mean, for for anybody that's a wrestling fan, and I wanted somebody on that we could talk wrestling with about anything, not just a certain subject or whatever. So. This will be this will be fun, and you know he's one of the big wigs, you know, of the business. He's like almost almost like the a Vince McMahon, but we don't want to really compare him to Vince McMahon anymore because Vince McMahon's kind of a creep now, I guess. Here, <laughs> it's like Big Man, 
He did a book about John Lennon. You can get into it a little bit with him. He thought he did music for music guys. I mean, he didn't only write wrestling books, you know. He yeah. did some books. Yeah. John Lennon. He did a, he did LeBron Jameson. He did basketball. He did everything. Even some children's books, too. I, I've seen that he did. He did, did a book about Michael J. Fox, too, for back in the day. So he's, I don't, uh, James Dean? Yeah. On James Dean? Michael it's amazing, yeah. Do you guys remember Geraldo at Large? He's a TV producer, too. He produced Geraldo at Large and America's Most Wanted. That's his son, I think. His oldest son. His oldest yeah. son's a producer. He's, uh, he's, yeah, he's, out he's a producer, Green too. Yeah. He's, well, either, he's, either uh, way. I an indie one. Yeah, but uh, we'll have to ask him. I'm sorry. No, he, he, you know... I, I it, think... it, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. It's it's going to step over no matter what. But I really think if somebody wants to talk on the show tonight, you raise your hand. And that's Sean Pickett because people get upset. And some of the guests get upset about that stuff. You know what I mean? They, they get stamped on or talked on. So, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Just, you know, we'll see your hand. Or I'll yeah. or Sean will see your hand. What do you want, Mama T, you little? Yeah. <laughs> The audience notices it too. They they yeah. notice that a lot too. It's not just the the guest. I mean, a lot of people will watch for a while. I've heard a little feedback, and they'll watch for a little while. And well, everybody's always talking at once. It's hard to understand. And I'm like, yeah, well, we're working on it. We're we're and, still kind of new, working all together, and we're we're figuring it out. And then Zoom, Sorry. and then Zoom will always like to uh, mute the audio when we're when too many people talk, or even when one person talks it's over. I remember Skype never did that stuff at all. When, but we've never done like multi stuff on, on Skype at all. We've always just done Zoom because I thought Zoom, you know, it's, why I picked Zoom in the first place was because I figured, well, well, at the time when, when it was just Sam and I, you know, I didn't know we were going to eventually have a whole group of people. I, you know, this was, this is still good software. And I definitely would recommend it more than any, most software that I, that I've heard about and everything just because. Mm -hmm. The only thing they have to do is work on their audio issues as far as like being able to, if I want to play some audio right now, I wish I didn't have to press like a certain button so people could hear it. I wish I could just play it over like some intro music or something and everybody could hear it, even the audience and everything, especially the audience. But can't what do that. We can't, I mean, we can, but it's like then I got to find, I got to go into the, the program, I got to find the file and whatever. And Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> um, I just want to say that um, Dan, Dan O'Keefe said, Mama loves them cigarettes. If it was weed, I'd be stoned just watching her. Hell, <laughs> hell. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, at least I'm drinking pop now. Did you see the first few episodes? I'm, it's only pop now. <laughs> pop. I'm, I'm behaving myself Soda. now. Are you drinking pop? pop? Well, here, here's, pop. here's what it? I was here, here's what I was going to say about uh, just to let you guys know about the, the future episodes of what's coming up here on the show. So far, I got nothing booked for March, which isn't really a problem because we could either do one or two things. And of course, I always say this and then all of a sudden, well, surprise, surprise, we have a guest or whatever. Well, because we've had a lot of people on and because we've you know, I mean, by the time the month is over, we're going to have at least probably I've had at least 20 guests at least by that by the end of the month, because we've had a guest on every episode, pretty much more than one, of course. And uh, I, I believe that it would probably be appropriate, especially, you know, for anybody that uh, unless you, you guys say otherwise, that we might just end up just taking a couple of weeks off. It, it, it'll take like a little early spring break. And I come I back, can, like, in the meantime, I'll call you. Yeah, yeah, or or whatever, you know. I mean, we we can, you know, might plan some extra stuff later or whatever. But like, as far as the show goes, we could take a a breather for a couple episodes, you know, because I I feel like I'm I'm kind of running out of like creativity a little bit. I'm getting into a little bit of a slump because you know, it's just like you know, we've been doing this all every week, you know, and we've been doing really well. But I think it's time now, you know. I think after next week, uh, you know, unless otherwise. We'll probably take the first two uh, Mondays of uh, March off and just do like a spring break and then come back mid-March. Go ahead, Mama. 
Yeah, you know how you uh, said, oh, well, our guest canceled and uh, maybe you could find somebody, right? And, and there was a couple people that I were showed interest and got back to me and I was like, oh, never mind. He's, but I think we've got March open. So I, I've if, got guests for March. If you, if, if, if you, you really can get me, to. if you can get me some guests or somebody can get me some guests and we'll, we'll continue. You know, I just, I'm just creatively right now. I just don't, don't know who else to ask right now. I'm a, kind of a little funk, you know, but I know hard to believe, right? You know, because I'm the one who's been getting all the guests you know, this, this season. Not that I'm trying to gloat or whatever, just, you know what I mean. It's been helpful. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, well, um, it's also nice to maybe do a night where we let the let our people that watch our show ask us questions about us. And stuff like that. That'd be fun. I mean, there's a lot of times I didn't have guests on my shows and we just did recaps and stuff. We talked about the shit we did. And, you know, some people like listening to that too. I mean, sometimes it ain't always about the guests because a lot of people don't know, don't know some of the guests, you know? So it's about us that they really well, like. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think, you know, we can still I do the show. Take off work. I hate to take off shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, that too is like, you know, we can, we don't have to have guests on all the time. I just figure, you know, why it's been happening the way that it has. It just, it's just been great. Haven't, we, haven't you felt pretty good, you know, that you've been talking, been able to be part of all these shows and, and all yeah. these, we're going way back to like mid, you know, like October, November since the last time we didn't have a guest on. So, yeah, so but that's if Go you uh, like me and me and Mama T said, if you want to have like all these guests bunched up in one show, we could spread out to fucking May. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, maybe I maybe I do that to myself, you know, when it comes to just kind of getting too excited, and just like, well, let's treat this like a professional show on NBC or whatever, you know. Let's treat this like you know, like we have Ed McMahon and. Johnny Carson and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I've always been a fan of the talk show format, so it's just always just been something that I've enjoyed, and that's why that's what this has become. So more than I thought it'd become anything. So I mean, what well, we can talk about, maybe we'll just have to have another meeting. You know, I mean, this is what people people are hearing. So go ahead, Mad Dog. Oh, you got me. Tone. For some hey, reason, that picture. Dog, say you. I know, but Shut listen, up. you can't this... see your hand or your face when you sit back. <laughs> whatever whatever you you lose we lose you all the time i lost my train of thought now thank you screaming sam you big yeah. hunk of bony hand well lisa said honey hand <laughs> <laughs> i missed you guys come on, come on. let's talk to him <laughs> they ever said the word your uh, antique man. I mean, he never really says a whole lot. What, what's on his mind? What's on your mind, Eric? What's going on, well, man? <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned Ed McMahon. Did you know he was a colonel in the United States Army? No. I was looking up uh, Doc Severson the other day. Doc Severson's still alive. He's ninety six. Wow. And I just read those little trivia items that I didn't know. Okay. No, I don't Other know that either. That, nothing new at this end. Well, do Whether you have any? Getting... Do you have any recommendations for what we should do for the March episodes at all, or anything? You, know, let, or anything me, you have? let me think that over for a couple of days. Okay. I might. I might be able to come up with something. Sure. People. People uh, loved my idea about talking about letting them talk or letting yes. us know about us. They said they loved that, and I don't want you to get mad at me, uh, Sean. <laughs> or, or Frankie, whatever the fuck your name is. He said, Scream and Sam. Great. Scream and Sam most had the vocals and the professional skills. We need more Scream and more Sammy. Don't get mad. Hey, yeah. you want to host a show for a night? You can. You know, I, I'll give you the range, man. <laughs> hey, that's I'll give you the power. Shoot the you know, messenger. We can't hey, help what people say the on the. <laughs> we can't help what people say on the internet. Keep saying to people, "I love it myself." Keep talking, <laughs> Frankie. That's his wife doing that in the other room. Don't listen uh. to him. <laughs> <laughs> no matter with the orange background. Oh, you know, that's, that's you, funny. That's that that fucking phone funny. you got. It fades away, dude. Your ass fades away. Your ass. <laughs> 
Well, here, here, I'm that's due that's to a good diet. How about this one here? They said we need a I ain't going to say no more about me. <laughs> I'm not going to. You'll read them later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Is that you when you were little there, there, there Anthony? Mad Dog? Go ahead, Eric. My brother does. Man. Go ahead, Antique Man. Maybe we could invite a dietitian. <laughs> oh. What are you trying to say we're fat? Yeah. Why? No, you... <laughs> I just, just for you guys, not for you, Mama. Today I wore a, a larger shirt so I could fit in with everybody. <laughs> Wait a minute. I lost, I'm, I'm down 76 pounds now. Wow, that I is great. I'm apparently you missed. Apparently you missed. What's that? Appa apparently, antique man missed the part where I said I was sitting upstairs snacking the whole time I've been gone. He wasn't doing. He wasn't on. Right. He wasn't uh, on. Not, I heard. And that then he says part, not for. <laughs> but Mama raised me smarter I than to say anything. <laughs> I'm wearing a big sweatshirt too. <laughs> too late. Too late, Eric. You already said it. Yeah. It's a... <laughs> Well, this is nice. This, you know, so this is what people want. I said more discussions like this. <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, it, it's it's all good. I gotta be positive about everything because you know, like like exactly. I said, you know, this is a great great group of people. And we we have everybody on. It's like it's magic. And now that we got Mama T back and everything. Now we're just missing John Roberts, but we'll we'll have him back on next week. No, I love I love this. I mean, because every episode it seems like you know we always try to figure out what's the next best thing. And right. I, I just feel like I don't give you guys enough time to to do segments or, or talk at all when we only give you a half an hour to do a segment and then all of a sudden we got a guest on for another hour and then it's like, but that takes up most of the time. So whatever you want is I'm willing to lower lower the guests if, if need be so it doesn't always have to be like that. It's just that it just worked out this way. That's all. But we can go back you know, to the format if you want. You know Keith said what the fuck? Antique man is thinking of Anthony Lutz and John Lutz, fat ass brothers. LOL. Listen, motherfucker. I don't know if you heard, but we lost fucking weight. I lost 76 fucking pounds. My brother lost over 100. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> wow. Screaming Sam, man. She's screaming I still, love you, I still love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, hugs and kisses. <laughs> oh, good God. That's funny. <sighs> It's it's a bad another though, fifty sure. pounds, and you can fit in the fucking Volkswagen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weight was, it said, you want to fit back into it? You said my car. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I fit in it now. Right. Believe me. That's All funny. Right. That's funny. He doesn't say much, but when he does, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I fit. I, I, I Stop fit it! I'm getting old. I fit in a Volkswagen right now. Perfect. Had I not lost 76 pounds, you wouldn't be seeing that Volkswagen in the background because I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> there you go. That's a, that's a motivational machine then. You know, I, love that. I love that car, dude. That is my yeah. best well, I like it too because it reminds me of my car too. Even though I'm not, I don't have a Volkswagen, but it still reminds me. All right, guys. Our guest uh, is, is uh, coming through here, so. Remember, folks, wait, put your hand up and Sean will call us because it gets too crazy. Yeah. Yes, go we teacher. A number here. I don't know who's that. I don't know if this is him or if there's somebody else here. Who else would it be? Well, I mean, because people can call in too if they know, if they know how to. I don't know. We'll see. Number doesn't look familiar, but. That doesn't mean much. We'll see what, what he goes on cam anyway. Uh, so I told him 6.30, it's, it's only 6.28, so he's probably going to be precise on time. He's sure. early, whoever he is. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll figure it out. We may just decide to do like another meeting maybe. We'll have, we might have to talk about that, just do like an you know, updated That's meeting. Like, hey, let's let's plan some fun stuff, what we want, what do we want to do, you know, for a future let's episode. Let's do it. You know? Because I think that'd be a great idea. I think after we get down with next week's guests, and if you guys, you know, because I'm I'm willing to stand by, and you guys can figure out, you know, who you think would be great for the show. Just as long as they're entertaining, as long as they've done something with in the world of entertainment. That's all I ask. 
I don't want you interviewing homeless people and said, oh, what's the homeless word on the street this week? You know, it's like, we don't want. What about know. porn stars? I have to ask. <laughs> wow. I have to ask. Hey. No porn stars. Well, here he is. Here's our guest of the, of the week. How's it going there, Mr. Keith Elliott Greenberg? How are you, sir? Hello. Hello. Hi. I heard you guys discussing me, and then I realized I had to press OK to enter the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're you're familiar with Zoom. You're you're the Zoom legend. I, I should you. be. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we're excited to have you on the show, sir, because uh, I, I I'm excited. Uh, my crew is excited. Uh, you're you're definitely a a legend in the business. You know, and I'm not just saying that just 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 to say that. I'm saying that because you've done so much stuff. You've been around for a long time. You wrote books about all types of things. I don't know how you have time to just breathe, let alone uh, uh, just to do, just to live your normal life. But uh, uh, we appreciate the, the fact of having you on the show. Uh, we're just, you know, we're Renegade Radio. I'm the host, Frankie. We kind of started this idea back in the end of August of last year and kind of just grew into something uh, exciting. We've been able to get lots of good guests on and majority of, or pretty much everybody that I have on here has done uh, as far as my crew goes, has done things with entertainment, so that's why that's why everything works for the show. So, welcome to uh, Renegade Radio. Glad to be here. <laughs> welcome. So, I want to uh, simply just kind of start do uh, well an introductory run with the with the crew here, so you know who you're talking to. Because I know you don't might not know much about me as well, but I'll save myself for last. We'll start with Screaming Sam here. I'm uh, Screaming Sam. I was a uh, number one Sam Kinison tribute artist years ago and um, had my own Screaming Sam show, uh, TV show, radio show, own businesses, a lot of businesses back in the day. But now I'm retired and I'm on the Frankie Slauson show. Can't get any better than this. Renegade Radio. That's right. And this was me back in the day when I did Sam Kinison. You know who Sam Kinison was, right? Of course I do. <laughs> huh? Yeah, you got your background kind of in the way, kind of there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 having the issue that your brother had last week with the show, you know, when he was showing his picture. There you yeah, go. I gotta take it off. But anyway, yeah, that's 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 me. So glad you're on the show. I heard a lot about you. I can't wait to for the interviews. And a lot of people on uh I take care of the chat room excited about you on. So thank you. Uh huh. Go ahead, Mama T. Let me know when we're officially rolling. Oh yeah, Mama T. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Keith? Uh, I'm really glad you're here. I'm glad I I checked out who you are, uh, who I am. I'm dating a a blues musician who's been on the charts now, probably sixty six weeks. He produced um a a. a Album for Nora Jean, one for Sunday Wild. Um, you own a bar. I do a newsletter, and I do a podcast too. Apparently, <laughs> she's just making her return because she hasn't been on since like the season two premiere back in January. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot. I forgot how to talk for a second. Uh, <laughs> All right, a while. we got Antique Man, Eric Siphon. Hi, Keith. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, just an old rock and roll singer songwriter from the Dakotas and Minnesota. Uh, got a few songs out there on a the radio or two. Uh, induction to the South Dakota Rock Hall of Fame and still kicking at 71. <laughs> and last but not least, we got Mad Dog, which is Anthony's iPhone. Go ahead. Hey, Keith, I, I've been waiting for this all day. I am, I was a professional wrestler here in Pittsburgh for 18 years. I only wrestled in the church halls and I couldn't travel out of my zone because I had kids and a wife and I really didn't want to make it a profession, but it got pretty hot and heavy. I wrestled the likes of Nikolai Volkov and, and uh, I did uh, the Bushwhackers and in the church halls, you know, my mentor, I don't know if you know him. His name was uh, Lord Zoltan, Ken Jugan. He was I in the old Ken yeah. days. He brought me up and through the ranks. I was two time heavyweight champion. It's you can see in my background. Me yes. with Nick, I busted my skull open with a chair. 
And uh, I just recently made it November 4th in the Keystone State Wrestling Alliance Hall of Fame with Bruno and all them guys, Dominic Danucci. I was inducted with Guido Mongo, who was another guy who trained me. I remember him. Yeah. Uh, my Tatry. Time. Tatry is his last name, right? Tatry? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He just passed away recently. He was supposed to yeah. be at the production, but and uh yeah, I I I loved wrestling all my life. I, I can't wait for I actually can't wait for the interview to get on because I'd love to hear about the guys on the other side of the spectrum, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. saw them in the locker rooms. You got to sit with them personally and like actually travel with them. So I'm very excited and thank you for being on our show. Thank you for having me. And of course, I'm Frankie Slossa. Like I mentioned, I'm the host and co creator of uh, Renegade Radio. I uh, always loved broadcasting, I always wanted to do something with broadcasting. From northern Minnesota, like most of the guys, besides a few people that we have on. Uh, just uh, loved entertainment. Uh, always, and I uh, was uh, always a big wrestling fan. It's kind of more le leaned around like WCW, you know, back in the day because I pre NWO and all that stuff. I'm talking like Clash of Champions. I mean, we we had Bill Sullivan on last week, and next week we have Travis Orndorff on. So Ooh, it's like I know uh, Travis, yeah. Oh yeah, and and we've had Vinny Vinny Barry on as well. Uh, no, I know Vinny too. And we, we yeah, so I see that you guys did that you had uh, you were on his uh, podcast not too long ago. Or yeah, a while ago. Yeah, he and uh, I, he and Vinny and I actually uh, were messaging each other today. Oh, well, that's that's good. It's like it's a small world keeps on getting small. Yeah, well, community. Like, <laughs> thanks to the world of the internet, right? Yes. Uh, but I uh, always loved entertainment. Always been a big wrestling fan. Uh, I've interviewed a lot of wrestling people in, in uh, my uh, 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 years of doing interviews. Uh, I've done this stuff since 2006. Uh, uh, could never seem to find a real job in, in the radio industry because it's, you know, it's been a lot harder nowadays, especially because people want to do automation all the time instead of having somebody live in the studio till like 12 o'clock at night or whatever. But uh I wanted to do a podcast. Uh didn't know you know if I was gonna, you know, how good it was gonna turn out. So the idea of Renegade Radio because of an old friend of mine who uh passed away about 2015, he he did a show that was called uh, Renegade Radio back in his early radio days, and in, in like the Baltimore area or whatever it was. Uh, anyway, so the podcast came, and I had my friend Sam uh, join me, and uh, it just kind of grew and grew, and uh, now we got you on. So it's uh it's very special. So I'm really honored to have you on, and uh, man, this is a rare treat. Oh, every week's been Thank a rare treat. Seems like, but this is even like. Santa Claus coming down your chimney type of tree. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's very nice of you. Yeah. So, I mean, to, to kind of kick things off, uh, I guess, uh, you know, why why uh, uh, journalism? Why why be a journalist? Uh, what what about that type of uh, field uh, hooked your interest? Well, I, I don't know if I fell into it. As a kid, I wanted to be an artist, and I didn't quite have the discipline to draw things to scale. I remember as a teenager taking some art classes and I, you know, I enjoyed my writing classes. So uh, I'm like, well, I want to do something creative and maybe I could make a living doing this. And by the time I was 19, I was generating income selling articles. And so I was like, okay, people will pay me to write. I guess I'll keep doing it. Maybe I can actually you know, make a living doing this. And that's what that, and now it's been 46 years. Wow. Awesome. Go ahead, Mad Doug. Hey, uh, what got you into the wrestling scene? Like, how did you get your feet into the door, your beginnings? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, I was, um, I was very young. I was starting out and I was a big wrestling fan. And my grandparents were wrestling fans. And I remember I pitched, I was pitching stories to different publications. Back then, you know, I'm a lifetime New Yorker. I would actually go to people's offices and try to get someone's attention and then just start pitching them face to face. This is the late 70s. And, and by the early 80s, I was in Us Weekly's office. And the editor said, well, I have a whole staff of reporters and 
you know, you're just a kid. Like, you know, what do you know about that they don't know about? I said, I bet I know more about professional wrestling than any of these guys do here. He goes, awesome. yeah, pitch, pitch me a wrestling story. And um, at the time, David Sammartino was wrestling. And I said, well, Bruno Sammartino. He goes, oh, I remember Bruno Sammartino. Well, the living legend is very disappointed because he wanted his son to go to college. And now the son's followed him into the family business. He goes, that's a good story. And he gave me the assignment. I did it. And this was still the Bob Backlund era, not the Hulk Hogan era yet. So professional wrestling was not covered by many national publications. So I was able to launch myself pretty high in a short amount of time. And once I had that first story in Us Weekly, I found that other publications were open to me doing wrestling stories for them. And by the time uh, WrestleMania one took place, I was sitting next to the editor of what was then the WWF magazine, Ed Rusciutti, who still remains a friend. And he said, well, why don't we put you on retainer? You know, and you can write for us every month. And so then I was working for the WWF magazine without even having to go into the office. You so that was an, a bad situation. You mentioned Bruno. See, I'm from Pittsburgh. No, and yeah. I actually lived next to Jumping Johnny DeFazio yeah. and Rocky Romano. And they're the guys who really launched me. And I got, that was my fixation. I used to watch. Johnny DeFazio walk around my Wilson without his shirt on. You yeah, know? no, Johnny DeFazio did what wasn't he a high official in the union in Pittsburgh? Yeah, and, and, and that's why he could never really go on the road. Yeah, he was in the steel workers. He was uh yeah. the fight the president of the steel workers union. Right, yeah. Yeah, so got, that's why we <laughs> never saw him outside of Pittsburgh. But anybody I meet of a certain age who Grew up in Pittsburgh. He's one of the first guys they mentioned. He was awesome, man. He was such a great guy. But that's all right. Anybody else want to go a question before I before I know about 300 more? I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Bob. So I'm going to steer it away from wrestling just for a second because I, I was a wrestling fan when, you know, like in high school and stuff like that. But I was more of a writer, a reader. Uh, my English was my favorite subject, too. I wrote some short stories. They never went anywhere. I do this pot or the newsletter now. Um, I noticed you've got some um, nonfiction murder stories out there. Do you read? Are you a King fan at all? Uh, I am a Stephen King fan. It's f funny you say that when my oldest kid, who's now a filmmaker, was in school, he was reading um, Stephen King books in fourth grade. He brought it to school and got into trouble. And I had a <laughs> confrontation with the teacher about it because <laughs> I felt it's reading, it's expanding your mind, it's creative. And she felt it wasn't age appropriate. And um, there, you know, there was uh, some disdain on both sides that never quite faded. Um, uh, but, I, you know, I mainly enjoy nonfiction. I have written a number of true crime books and, of course, have worked in true crime television for many years. Yeah, the Ca the Caffey family was one of them. Um, the, the, what was it? Yes, love, that's love, right. Love in it. Texas, yes. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have you did you write any children's books? Did I've, I really I've, written, I've children's written many books? children's books. They, they're all nonfiction. Yes. I will let someone else go because I could just talk about books and murder mysteries and <laughs> murder fiction forever because I sit and watch that stuff on TV and, you know, it's probably not good for a woman in a relationship to be watching so much Snapped, but, you know. I don't know. About that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of women love love true crime. I, for some reason, that seems to be the audience. And I don't know if it's that women like to make themselves terrified or whether they like to feel, hey, I thought my life was messed up. But then you meet people who were victims in these stories and they also watched true crime. And they, I mean, dozens of times people have said to me, 
I can't believe I'm being interviewed for a TV show now. And it's my life that people are going to be watching. I'm just a regular person who fell into a bad situation. So, Well, I think some of it might be the woman might feel like, okay, I can see where that murder is coming from. Yeah. You can. <laughs> I mean, look, everyone, everyone can <clears throat> perhaps the motivation to do something extreme. But it's that tiny percentage of people who act on the impulse. And that's what makes it fascinating. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> okay. You well, invite me on the show. I'm supposed to talk to everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I figured because, you know, I've seen a lot of the interviews that you've done. And, man, I tell you, yeah, it's almost every outlet wants you on. You you, you must be no, that no, special guy. You must be that special guy that, you know, that has that magic ingredient. <laughs> many levels, many levels. That's what somebody, it is. Thank you. somebody wrote on here, he's a big fan of yours, Gregory David Olson. Yes. Hogan or Hogan or Austin? Um, well, that's an interesting <laughs> question because obviously they both represent different eras. Um, without Hulk Hogan, the Steve Austin era would not have come to pass. <laughs> But of course, Steve Austin was able to embody a lot of the angst of society in a more adult way and in a way that Hulk Hogan didn't and make himself relatable to an edgier audience, which was something uh, WWE desperately needed at that time because they were in some ways being overshadowed by what was going on in WCW with the NWO. So I would think that the average person who experienced both eras, unless they were a child during the Hulkamania era, they would probably, you know, relate more to Austin because he, he act like what we were talking before about true crime. He acted on impulses the average adult was supposed to, um, you know, contain. But, uh, you know, that said, they both uh, have had their, their virtues. And they're both eras are very valuable in the history of the industry. Go ahead, yeah, the, the Austin era brought in the, the Hill actually being clapped for instead of booed on all the time. Right, Austin yes. The face of wrestling by coming in as a Hill and giving everybody the finger, and, and everybody loved them. And that was right. on you know, it's interesting because you're talking about Hogan versus Austin. One of the reasons it was so necessary to anoint Austin was because over in the NWO, Hogan had become a villain. And as a much of a beloved hero as Hogan had been, now he was hated just as vehemently. And so he was taking the concept of the all-American idol and turning it upside down. And so um, were it not for Hogan again, the, the Austin era would not have been as enjoyable. So on two levels, Hogan is responsible for what Steve Austin became. And that's no offense to Steve Austin, who, as we all know, is in two together. I never put them two together like that. That was yeah. awesome. I yeah. that. Well, you yeah. know, I mean, if you if you go back to your ECW history for a short time there, uh, Austin did an impersonation of Hogan that people have he talked for. He did. He did an impersonation of Hogan, and he did an impersonation of Bischoff, and it was very edgy stuff. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, it, it worked perfectly on uh, ECW. And if I'm correct, Austin might have even been injured while he was doing a lot of that. But it was so good, you couldn't look away from it. Because he was mad at De he was mad at Bischoff for firing him because yes I think you know, he was fired via FedEx yeah yep 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 that's a classic story that a lot of people yeah. know I mean they talk about well over. now that doesn't happen like now maybe you get fired by text but back then, <laughs> or tweet or whatever right by, by breakup text <laughs> ain't that the uh, truth. What was I going to say now? A lot has been going on in the wrestling world, as we all know, and we're not going to bring up you know the stuff that everybody keeps talking about. But I, what I want to talk because about, I didn't want to talk about. No, I, and I wouldn't expect you to because you know you probably have it other formats, and that's okay. 
We want to well, talk about- I mean, the, the reality is, I don't know anything. Fortunately, I yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else does it. Sure, sure, sure. And that's why, like I said, I was, you know, the only reason why I brought it up is just because I, I, I want to talk about this other story that that uh, is going on. In, it's it's a wrestling story, it's, you know, and I and and I see it being more of a, of a work than an actual or it could oh, be rock, a, rock, rock and Cody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I believe I believe something's going to happen at WrestleMania that this whole thing with the Rock joining the Bloodline. I think uh, you know. I, I hate to piss off a lot of people that are really excited about it, but I think uh, I think Rock's going to help Cody win. I really, really well. Think- look, we don't. You mean like Mike Tyson did when uh, Steve Austin won the title from Shawn Michaels? Um, <laughs> that's possible. I'm not a booker. I've never aspired to be a booker. Uh, I enjoy being a fan. I and I enjoy being surprised. I know that people are pretty f- fired up. And uh, they're talking about it quite a bit. And the ratings have been very good. So they're doing something right. And I remember, now I can't even remember which event it was, but it was an event um, that involved the bloodline. And Roman Reigns was at the press conference. It was either WrestleMania or it was you know, SummerSlam and, you know, Roman Reigns said, hey, this isn't fast food. Like he was trying to convey the fact that this is long term storytelling, you know, because this is the good stuff. So uh, that's the attitude. This isn't fast food. Like what you see on SmackDown or what you saw as a press conference isn't the end of the story. And maybe WrestleMania 40 won't be the end of the story. Um, But we're watching. And we're interested, and we're not turning away. No, and, and I mean that—that's just the whole thing about because the WWE. I mean, I feel like especially now because of all the stuff that's been going on, not just because of all the the the, the crazy stuff, but I'm talking how hot wrestling has become as Ooh. a whole. Like it's become right, it's the pandemic. Companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you got competition. You got AEW. That's you know. Doesn't that yeah. remind you of WCW? Like you know. In many ways, so look, I wrote a book about. Well, I wrote a book about indie wrestling that came out in 2020, right? And and right, it which ends with the launch of AEW, and then I wrote a book about pro wrestling in the time of COVID nineteen, and so uh, you know I wit I've been a witness. No, you know, like, even though I've been working in the wrestling business a long time, I'm not only doing nostalgia. So I have been a witness of this evolution that keeps unfolding. And, and um, every time popularity phase is going to end, it keeps going and it takes a new turn. And I think competition has a great deal to do with that. Um, You know, competition is good. Competition Mm -hmm. keeps people sharp. It gives talent an option. uh, When the talent makes a choice, whether that talent is Brian Danielson or Adam Copeland going to AEW or Jade Cargill and CM Punk or Cody Rhodes going to WWE, you know, they feel they've been respected by both, you know, they generally, generally, they feel they've been respected. They receive the best offer and they're excited to prove that they can make the company they've chosen better. And, Absolutely. Uh, so as fans, we're the beneficiaries of that. Yeah, and, and that, that's the thing that I was going to uh, talk about too because it's like we we do, we are getting like, you know, the best reward because, you know, a lot of people back in the day, you know, we would always talk about wrestling, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, they'd say the F word to it, you know, you know, which word yeah, I'm talking right. about. And it's uh, like, yes, and, it's, and it's not, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not the swear word, but a different word, you know, the rhymes with right, rape, Yes, that's know? right. Yes. <laughs> and I'm glad you call it the F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but you know, it, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it that people don't realize. You know, like I've interviewed a lot of wrestlers and people that are in the business, and they've told me stories upon lots of stories. I've even had me and Dean on a couple of times back, mm-hmm. uh, you know, many years ago, but before he passed. And you know, it, it, wrestling's an interesting thing. 
I always thought, you know, one of the things that got me interested in it back as a kid, it's just these larger little life people, you know, who, you know, whether they're rich or not or whatever, they all have a goal. They all want to be the, the best at what they're trying to become. So right. they all want that championship. That's the thing is that, you know, you think, oh, well, it's a predetermined sport. So, you know, the promoter determines the champ, you know, the, but when you are bestowed the champion, the championship, it, it does mean you're the best. It's like being given an Oscar, except you're expected to defend this Oscar and prove that you deserve to carry that Oscar week after week. And that's no joke. And there's real competition there. It's just a different type of competition. But it's the comp, like, you know, I wrote a book with Ric Flair. He said he was just as competitive when it came to cutting promos as it, ca as it came to putting on a great wrestling match. He wanted to have the best promo on every show every week. And, you know, that's a strong ethic. And that's what these men and women have. And that's what they display. And that's why they come across as larger than life because they are exceptional. And the average person can't do what they're doing as a guy like Mad Dog can test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what I was going to say, too, about, about that was uh, the fact that, like, okay, like, everybody deserves their spotlight in the sun. But sometimes I, I think the spotlight gets this gets uh, sold on, on on the same person too much, you know. Mm -hmm. Like and then sometimes that's what backs people away from loving the sport of wrestling. Like you're only focusing on a very short uh, list of people instead of you know you're forgetting about the roster that's you know doing the the, uh, the house shows and stuff and they're the yeah, ones that call that's jobbers and whatever and but blah you blah can't blah. Blame the fans if they're being exposed to the same people in a prominent position week after week. So it's pretty hard to keep track of, like, look, I was at, at um, the Royal Rumble press conference, uh, not press conference, press junket. I had a great conversation with Julius Creed of the Creed Brothers. Oh. You know, that guy is a, you know, a charismatic guy. He has all the makings of someone who could be a top star. You know, I was talking to Chad Gable, the guy who's literally an Olympian. Even Otis has, you know, a stellar amateur background and is a great character. All of these people are fantastic at what they do. They may not be the first name you think of, but every one of them is part of a machine and part of this great show. But I, you can't expect a fan to be fixated on Chad Gable or Julius Creed when the Judgment Day and the Bloodline are what's being and Cody Rhodes are being emphasized over and over again. So yeah, there's great talent there, but you know, with a television audience, and we're exposed to what what we're being given. I guess you it was just like the whole. It was like the whole NWO angle too. It was like, well, that came up. That was like, uh, you know, we were exposed to that for about four, four, three or four years until they started to wind down. Right. About it. <laughs> and look, the, the oh, NWO, right. as far as I'm concerned, it started out hot. And then, you know, you had so many factions and so many names. You know, occasionally I have, because I write for the British magazine, Inside the Ropes yep, magazine. I'm subscribed to that. Occasionally I have to make you know, a historical reference, and I'm referring to people who were in the NWO, and, you know, I have to look it up. And I'm like, oh, I forgot this one was in the NWO. Because there were just so many names. In oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, man. I did, I did a show with Virgil, and he actually took my belt and sprayed the NWO on it. And my back. <laughs> I actually had to keep the belt after I quit the organization. I got it hanging on my wall over here which I could show you. And uh, and uh, what I was going to say with the Cody Rose thing and, and the bloodline. Uh -oh. you thinking Someone of froze. Thing. Maybe I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, he can still he, answer you. Yeah, he can, we can still hear you. Okay, we can still hear you. He might have froze. He might have froze. Oh, there he is. Okay, uh, uh, 
Mad Dog froze. He said he has the belt hanging on his wall. And yeah. that was the last thing I heard. Okay, well, I was thinking with the my version of the Cody Rose and the Bloodline thing is I think they're going to bring out all the high priest and all the all the Samoans are going to come rushing in. And then you're going to have Cody Rose and his brother coming down. And people are going to, you know, that's the way I'm looking at it. I ain't looking at Rock flipping the screen. I'm looking at the, because he cut down the family. And you don't do that with the Samoans and the, you know what I mean? But but if we're, if we're going to just talk along storylines, if you remember, Roman Reigns had that battle with, was it Jimmy Uso? Yeah. Um, and when well, Jay Uso also became involved, and then he was made the tribal chief by Alpha and Sika afterwards. So we have seen dissension in the Anoa'i family of wrestling before. So you never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, you, you just never know. But I, you know, I just, I just wonder, you know, if, depending on how the story unfolds or whatever, whether we have a, a finish to it or we don't after WrestleMania, I just wonder how much longer they they're going to keep the title on Roman because you know it's just like a lot of a lot of us, you know, would like to see a, a new champion crown. I mean, yes, we have. It's funny to say, I, I read like, somewhere, and even though I say, oh, you know, these people on Twitter. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just a bunch of trolls. You know, sometimes I read something on, it's not Twitter anymore, it's X. And, um, you know, there's someone who wrote, oh, you know, they're keeping the title on Roman for so long to eclipse the legacy of Bruno San Martino. Now, who in the world confided that to the person who wrote that on social media? I have no idea. <laughs> You know, Roman Reigns is this era. Um, he has been a very effective villain. Um, and when you think about how he was received as a good guy, you know, the negative reaction to him. And when his, he was able to show his true personality, how he turned that around, um, you know, and we, we're, we're waiting to see him lose. I mean, that's a great heel champion. I mean, Ric Flair... Did that every and Harley race as NWA champions? That was the role they played. They went from town to town, and people were banking on this is the night they're gonna lose. So, uh, we're interested. We're not saying, Oh, Roman Reigns again, I'm gonna skip WrestleMania this year. <laughs> I don't think anyone's saying that. <laughs> I, I think that's just the thing, too. Maybe that's just something we have to get used to. Because you're right. I mean, you know, back in the day, that's what it was, you know. But, but a lot of people weren't paying attention to what was rest, what was going on in wrestling. So there was, you know, a lot of people who were champion a long time, you know, for, for years upon years. Right. It's just you don't see this in wrestling too often anymore. No, you know? we haven't seen it in a long time. And actually, I find a bit of it refreshing. Although, interestingly, um. You know, MJF was champion in AEW for over three years. Yeah. And right before he lost, he wrote that, what was it, Players Journal, that online uh, website that where, um, you know, the athletes write their stories. He did a story on there, and he admitted that MJF fatigue had set in. And again, he's 25, 26 years old, however, what it, maybe he's 27. But he's a young guy, and he grew up in an age where there weren't longtime champions. So, you know, perhaps he understood that even with him uh, carrying the mantle, that people were starting to get a little tired of that. And it was, I mean, he essentially said, time to pass the torch for now. Sure. Yeah. You got any questions, Mad Dog? That was your time to shine. Uh, the booker you wrote about John Lennon. I'm just let's get away from wrestling just for a second. And I mean, what inspired mm -hmm. you to write about him? Well, it was actually assigned to me, but uh, Mike Edison, who was my do it. At, 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 he's, he's an author as well at uh, Backbeat Books, he assigned, and we were also friends, and we still are. Um, he had assigned the book to me. Um, and, but I was very interested in the death of John Lennon. Um, and I remembered when it happened, I was 21 years old. And I'd actually saved a bunch of articles because you know there wasn't an internet back in 1980. So I saved all these articles and 
newspapers and special editions from the time John John Lennon died. So it was, you know, I had it. I had that file. And um, I wrote it from a very New York-centric perspective because John Lennon had become a New Yorker. Um, a lot of people moved to New York and they never accomplished that. Uh, you always have a feeling that they, they're ready to leave if something goes wrong. And he seemed extremely committed to living a New York lifestyle, given the limitations that he had. And so I think New Yorkers took that very personally. And I feel I was able to convey <clears throat> that story from a, a New Yorker's perspective. I also included the perspectives of the doctor in the, you know, in the um, emergency room and the Ed Koch, who was the mayor at the time, and the first police officers on the scene. I spoke to all of those people. And the guy who, you know, ended up becoming the disc jockey who was, um, you know, who, who at the time was working for a local radio station. And so you had a sense of how people were impacted. Nice. Go ahead there, Mama T. As long as um, Mad Dog gave us a segue back into uh, your uh, non-wrestling, um, <laughs> I was really uh, curious about your experience in researching all the the stories you did on the on murders and stuff like that. Did you ever find out more about, about the human psyche than you wanted to know? Did any of I don't know. If I, I think or? I always knew. You know, I mean. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, there's certain people that are just either they're um, warped by their experiences or they are just wired on. Like, I think many people can relate to when they were growing up, there'd be a family and say there were five kids in the family and four were perfectly behaved. And then there was one crazy one who was always in trouble in school and later in trouble with the law. I mean... That that might not have been genetics. There was just it was chemistry, perhaps. You know, it's pathology, and so you know that's the uh, burden on the parents because they're stuck with a kid like that. And um, you know, but I am intrigued by you know if you're the bad seed, <laughs> you know what happens to your life. Is there anything you can do to get off of that runaway train? And, you know, I'm also intrigued by, you know, I don't know if it is, you know, if, if you're, you're psychotic or you're, you know, if you're a sociopath, but it's like not having the mechanism to really understand that what you're doing has impact on others. Like, no, like, let's say, let's say I'm in a relationship and I want to kill my partner. Well, if we have kids together, that means my children will grow up with a murdered mother. Like, that's not good for children. So why yeah. would I want to do that to my kids? But if you don't have a mechanism for empathizing with others, you're not thinking of your kids. Like my friend just did a story where he murdered his friend and he wanted it to appear that he didn't do it. So he didn't want to find the body. He sent his wife and child in to find the body. So his five-year-old daughter walks into a house and sees a man she regards as her uncle shot to death. So this guy, not only did he kill his best friend, but he had his daughter. He, he instilled in her this trauma of seeing this guy murdered and then on top of that, her father ends up being the murderer. So he really <laughs> messed up that kid aside from the crime. You know, and I I don't know how someone gets to Kind of sounds like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, which is a great movie, isn't it? Yes. He's, uh, nine, he's doing nine, then he's doing ten, then he's done. Uh, if you don't know this about, about the Sharon Tate murders back in the late 60s, by the way, for all you followers who don't know about that. <laughs> I do. This is my, uh, this is a good buddy of mine. This is my friend Greg. 
uh, uh, that I grew up with. Uh, he wanted to be a part of uh, tonight's episode. So, because uh, he he knows uh, a lot about you, Keith, uh, about uh, what you've done and in the in the industry, and uh, he's a wrestling fan as well. And Greg has a lot of knowledge in, in the as a you know you could call him a wrestling historian as well. So, Greg yeah. Olson. Greg Olson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, well, so Keith, uh, I watched a lot of like documentaries, and Keith is always there. He knows the. So back, basically, back in the eighties and nineties, the business was completely different. You know. You know. That's why I I brought up the old Hogan and Austin thing. Uh, Hogan did it without, um, the internet and you know Amazon. You can order you know stuff like that. You know. I remember back when I was in a kid in the eighties, you had to like special order these t-shirts like Hulk Hogan or whatever or Ultimate Warrior and uh, with Hogan and I'm sorry if I'm going on track here. No, I want to hear this. Yeah, so so to me basically uh, Austin had a two year run and he was, he got so cold with the what what era of the, the you know, in 2000 whereas Hogan he was from like 84 to like 90. There was never a wrestler that had mainstream like with, with the uh rock and roll wrestling you know stuff in the uh media you know he was on cover of sports illustrated a wrestler was never on that before hulk hogan uh a, a cartoon you know i, I think i think danny hodge yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah and you know his movies were kind of okay corny you know <laughs> but you know yeah but then he came back as a heel and he completely changed the whole wrestling thing and he kind of like came like passe, but he came back in the WWF at WrestleMania 18, blew the house up in Montreal. Right, which I don't think anyone expected, and that's interesting because we were talking about The Rock and Cody before. It was, you know, Hollywood Hogan versus The Rock. Yeah. And everyone was expecting Hogan to get booed and The Rock yeah. to get cheered. And yeah. I was there in the Toronto Sky Dome. <laughs> <laughs> there, you go. there you go. They were that the fans were so into Hogan. Yeah, they essentially booed the rock out of the building yes. and welcome back the prodigal son. That first lockup when Hogan pushed him back and the he looked at the crowd. He was like this. He knew it. <laughs> yeah, they both, like they, or they, <laughs> the, they, uh, they, they both. They were both professional enough to know exactly what was transpiring. Right. Right. And they both went with it. Yeah. And I'm glad they did that. But you know, so I'm not going to steal the show with that comment, but you know, uh, I, I I just joined the group. I, I've known Sean for, uh, what, 30 some years? Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, he's, he's uh, interviewed a lot of the greats in the business, so he's a very good person. So uh, I'm I'm going to kind of follow what you guys do and just kind of like go from there. <laughs> so I, I'm retired. You know, I did a uh, 20 years in the Army. I'm a retired Army veteran, so I'm going to uh, watch you guys. <laughs> so, thank, thank, you you. thank you. Thank yes. you. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, uh, uh, other than, than, than all that, uh, what have you been working on currently there, Keith? Well, I, mean, I, I should there. mention my two last books. I had 2020, uh, Too Sweet, Inside the Indie Wrestling Revolution, which is about the uh, evolution of... Uh, Indie wrestling leading to the formation of AEW. 2022, I had um, Follow the Buzzards, pro wrestling in the age of COVID-19. And I am currently 291 pages in to my next book, whose working title is Bigger, Better, Badder, WrestleMania. Light. Huh? I need more light. Year, everything changed, which is about how... WrestleMania three transformed the industry because once they sold out that NFL stadium, um, no one could say that quote unquote fake wrestling was not marketable. Advertisers came in in droves. Sponsors came in. Cities started bidding for WWE to have WrestleMania you know, in their city and generate that revenue. At the same time, the territory system suffered because of it. And I outlined the territories and what was going on in the territories prior to WrestleMania three, 
and during that that year and what the long term effects were. Um, Jim Crockett Promotions in Charlotte, which was the WWF's main competitor, um, they ended up uh, putting up a good fight, but overspending and ultimately ultimately had to sell to Ted Turner, which resulted in the wrestling war of the 1990s. So, uh, you know, that's a story for another day. Well, we, we appreciate having you on there, Keith. We don't want to take up too much more of your time, but for people that want to know more about you, how could they do that? Uh, they can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm on Facebook, although um, I'm right around that. I'm pretty close to my friend limit on Facebook, but people can find me on social media, and as long as you don't insult me, <laughs> I do have people who seem to enjoy just bashing me on social media. Oh, Trolls. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Antique Man, go ahead. Bad dog. I'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Peace. I yes. wanted to thank you. I really enjoyed listening to your story about writing and wrestling mm -hmm. and uh, the parallels of oh, your no story uh regarding competition and success and perseverance really applies to everybody and everything but uh, i really enjoyed your your story thank you love thank it you. love it i also right, like bye, your bye. gimmick name now thank you see my Garrett. picture yeah there we go <laughs> that's, great. that's great wow yeah well we appreciate having you on and again thank you keith i mean this has been a real honor Really, I'll it's never a forget pleasure this. Pleasure for me too, as I think you could all tell. Oh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. We love you, bro. A lot of people love you. Thank you, man. We and we, we appreciate it. Mama T, you have anything else to say? Or yeah, say? I just I just wanted to thank you for being the first guest I I got to interview uh, on my return show, and I can't wait to get into some of your books. I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and going to start leaning a little more towards nonfiction now. Good. Thanks to you. Till the next time, Mama T. Uh, absolutely. Time. And, and and I think this is where we'll end it for this week. Okay. So we'll see you guys uh, all Thanks. again for Renegade Radio next week. Right all here. Right, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.